Welcome everyone. Um, I really, really appreciate you all taking time out of your day. I know we live in a busy modern world here where everybody's usually running around off to one thing or another. Um, so I appreciate you taking the time to tune in. Um, this uh, presentation is a part of the UCLA Integrative Medicine Wellness uh, Wellbeing webinar series. Um, you can find the recording of this afterwards along with a bunch of other amazing presentations at uclahealth.org slash integrative dash medicine. Um, so definitely stay tuned and see uh, if there are any other topics that interest you. Um, I really, really quickly wanted to introduce myself and also the music therapy, tell you a little bit about the music therapy program at UCLA. Um, so first off, I'm Jenna Bollard. I'm a board certified music therapist and a certified child life specialist um, with side specializations in um, NICU music therapy and music therapy assisted childbirth, um, and also a strong interest in Reiki, um, energy healing, and I'm continuing my studies actually in um, acupuncture, um, studying traditional oriental medicine, um, because you can never stop learning. And there's so much information out there to learn that can support ourselves and the community at large. So um, I'm very passionate about music and using music to heal and to promote stress management throughout all stages of life. Um, but particularly for this webinar, we're going to focus on the perinatal uh, phase of life and all that that entails. And hopefully we can really scratch the surface on um, some ways to use music to promote wellness throughout that huge transition um, that many go through in their lives. Um, so, and a little bit about our music therapy program at UCLA, we're totally philanthropically funded. We started in 2016. We're a small little uh, mighty team and we are on pediatrics right now and also on the NICUs. Um, we're starting one of the, at least one of the new music therapy fellows who's starting next week is on this call, Julia. Um, and we have in the past done some pilot programs on the maternity units as well. And now at this time are just sort of available for consults in that area, but hope to one day provide regular stress management services through music to all patients and families in UCLA Health um, as a whole. Uh, but right now we are busy on pediatrics through the Chase Child Life Department is where we are housed. Um, so I would love for this presentation to be um, casual in the sense that if you have um, thoughts, questions, or even if you can relate to something that I say and you wanna chime in, please do feel free to um, put it in the chat or unmute yourselves and, and chime in. I love having these discussions. I think that's where the growth really happens and where information is exchanged. So please feel free to do so. I can't uh, see the chat, but I think Erin is going to keep an eye on that for me and we'll read out if anybody has anything to say. Um, before we dive in, I would love to hear if you feel comfortable putting it in the chat or unmuting yourself, even better. We'd love to see your faces even if you're in a place to do so. I would love to hear your name, um, where you are and what brought you to this webinar, what interests you in this topic. Uh, so if anyone is willing to <laughs> share, that would be wonderful. Oh, I see some familiar faces. There we go. Hi, Gina. <laughs> Hi. Do you want us to share? Sure. Yeah. What brings you here? Oh, Jenna, you bring me here. <laughs> it's so nice to see familiar faces. <laughs> um, I'm Gina. I'm a pediatric palliative care social worker and bereavement coordinator and um, just such a fan of you know, um, Medicare benefit. Music there. Sorry. We, uh, we have, our team is talking, so I'm going to actually wait because no we're problem. on an important call. Okay. Sorry. Thank you for joining us. Sure. Awesome. Oh, and now I see the chat. Here we go. Uh, 
Sandy, acupuncturist. Hey, nice. I uh, used to work for music for my, you used music for your delivery and it was helpful. Would love to hear more about how you're using, using music to help patients. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. That is so exciting. Well, hopefully some of this information will be at least um, sparking some insights and further um, research for everyone. Um, get this conversation going and I hope to be able to point everyone in the right direction for more information. We're just kind of skimming the surface today. So, and I see Julia is here too. Hi, I'm Julia. As Jenna mentioned earlier, I'm a music therapist at Chalk Children's here. I work in the NICU and I'm starting my fellowship at UCLA with Jenna next week. Yeah. Awesome, let's see if anything else in the chat here. Oh, Gina. <laughs> Oh, and Kelly. Hi, Kelly, Director of Child Life. Excited to hear more about how music reaches all populations. Yeah, definitely. Um, this is one you don't hear of as often, right? Um, Gina, pediatric palliative care social worker and bereavement coordinator. We're so lucky to have her here. Um, want to see how to continue have music therapy be a part of perinatal care. Definitely. Awesome. Yes. And it definitely can be um, emotional support um, in times of loss and challenge as well. All right. Thank you all so much for sharing. Uh, so today we are going to be doing a little bit of a mini music experiential. So if you are um, driving or if you are in a place um, where, you know, maybe people are around, I would just recommend um, either turning the volume down a little bit, but just making sure that you're in a safe place. Um, I'm going to play some singing bowls in a few moments um, and we'll be guiding some guided imagery. So if that is something that potentially could be um, triggering to you as we're going to be visualizing a baby, visualizing a child, I just ask that you um, either decide for yourself to step away for those five minutes or um, plant your feet on the floor, keep your eyes open, tap your third eye in between your eyebrows and allow yourself to be grounded in your body throughout that. And then um, right after that guided relaxation uh, part of the experiential, we'll be doing a little writing exercise quickly before digging into some of the research and some of the information about music and playlist making for delivery, prenatal support, postpartum, and beyond. Um, we're also gonna talk a little bit, scratch the surface on what we know about the history of music as healing. That is endless. I mean, there's so much that we don't even know um, and are still discovering more and more about how music was used in ancient times for healing as well. Um, we'll talk about the, hi Aviana. <laughs> we'll talk about the neurochemical and physiological responses that our bodies just naturally have to music, just when it's on. You don't even need to do anything differently other than having it on and how our body immediately reflects our environment of um, sound and music. And then of course, we'll talk about how to adapt um, the use of music throughout the different phases of the perinatal experience. So before digging in um, too far to this, um, I really wanted to throw a term out there that I'm not sure if everyone has heard of, but I really recommend becoming familiar with it in family-centered care. And especially if you work in perinatal care or have an interest in it or are going through this yourself personally in your own life, know someone who is, um, the term matrescence. I think it's really important to touch on this, especially as um, music is a treatment that is not just for baby, um, but is for the whole family. And you can be treated at the same time. You don't need to just have a treatment for baby. You can be treating um, the caregiver dyad or the whole family with music all at once. And it is multifaceted and multi-beneficial. Matrescence is the psychological birth of a mother similar to adolescence involving hormonal and identity shifting and body morphing. Um, this term was originally coined by Dana Raphael in the mid seventies and then has later resurfaced um, 
became very popular with Dr. Alexandra Sachs in the past four years um, because of her New York Times article, her TED talk, and her recent book, What No One Tells You, A Guide to Your Emotions from Pregnancy to Motherhood. Um, and it was also brought to light by the study of um, maternal psychology at Columbia University. Um, I bring this up just because it, it illuminates an area um, that needs further support in our medical field today. Mothers and fathers and caregivers, parents in general are often left without the proper emotional support and stress management support that they need during this crucial transition phase going through um, pregnancy, no matter how um, that is about if it's a surrogacy or they themselves are pregnant um, and into the postpartum phase as well. There is a huge need for more stress management support and emotional support opportunities for processing and non-pharmacological ways as well to support and build those coping mechanisms that can carry not just in the immediate postpartum phase, but into uh, parenthood as well. Um, so I just wanted to illuminate that a bit and just speak to how in order to care for baby, we need to be able to care for mom. We need to be able to care for the parents. And I think UCLA does a great job with family-centered care, um, but we can never have too many reminders to factor in how um, our treatment plans serve parents as well, particularly mothers who are going through matrescence. Um, so without further ado, we're going to do a quick little um, music relaxation experience. So again, make sure you're in a safe position. Um, emotions might come up or maybe not. Um, if they do, I would just make sure that you're in a space where um, you're okay with that happening and you feel safe. Um, if not, then this will be about a five to eight minute long meditation. So you can always turn off the camera, step away and come back to this. Um, to those of you who want to participate, um, Go ahead and close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. Starting by breathing in through your nose. And out through your mouth. Taking another deep inhale in, two, three, four. hold your breath, and exhale, releasing. On your next inhale, imagine sending breath from the tip of your toes all the way up like an ocean wave out through the crown of your head. deep inhale, allowing yourself to go in your mind, imagining a place where you feel totally comfortable and safe. Imagine yourself sitting there Imagining light flowing from the tip of your toes, up through your torso, out through the crown of your head. Light flowing through all the channels in your body, down your arms and legs.
As you imagine that light growing, begin to imagine in your mind's eye a baby that you are holding and nurturing. Now this can be a hypothetical baby, or if you are joining this call and you are expecting, it can be your baby. Just imagining another being that is in need of your nurturing and imagine cradling that being in your arms in this place of comfort. Imagine looking into this being's eyes, looking at their face, and just noticing what words come to mind as you think of describing this being that you're cradling in your arms. Words that describe this beautiful being that is in your arms. Taking a deep breath in. Imagine not only you being surrounded by light, but also this baby, this being that you're caring for. And now imagining what you would like to say to this baby, this being, what you want them to know. And finally, taking a deep inhale and thinking of a promise that you have for this baby. And saying that promise in your mind. Taking a deep breath in, acknowledging that you will always be protected as you also help to protect others. Keeping a little bit of that light with you. Slowly bringing your awareness back to your body in the present moment.
taking a deep breath in. Exhale, releasing. Maybe shifting your weight from side to side or moving your arms, stretching your body, however you feel you need. Taking three more deep breaths together as a collective, breathing in through your nose. Two, three, four, hold. Two, three, and exhale. Breathing in. Two, three, four, and hold. And exhale. One more final breath together, breathing in. Releasing what you do not need. slowly at your own pace. If your eyes are closed, allowing a little more light to enter your eyes with your gaze downward. Giving yourself a little grace as you come back to your surroundings. Okay. Now I asked a few questions throughout that guided relaxation. Um, and I may be needing your help in the next part of the experiential. Um, if any of you are willing to share some of those ideas. Um, but first, was anyone, um, does anyone have any comments as to how they feel after that brief experience with sound and music in the middle of your busy day? You can write it in the chat if you prefer. Go ahead, yeah. It's always hard to allow yourself to switch gears, but I always, it's like exercise. I always feel like when you allow yourself in the middle of the day, it's so worth it and it will, it helps with productivity and just general coping. So like, I always feel myself resisting at times, but I'm always reminded that it's so worth it. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, kind of let that adrenaline exit our system for a moment. It's pretty powerful how it can transform our whole body. <laughs> yeah, thanks for participating. And I'm seeing in the chat to Ingrid. Hi, Ingrid, thanks for joining. Um, that you feel connected, wonderful. Grounded, connected, great bird. Okay, so the next part of the experiential, can everyone see the screen okay? Okay, let's see, whoops. Um, so I'm wondering, what words came up, if any, during the meditation for you all um, to describe baby or the being? I mean, it could have been a puppy that you were cradling in your own mind. <laughs> um, but what adjectives, what describing words came up for you? Oops, some in the chat. Let's see. Oh, joy. Nice. Precious. Nice. Oh, that's a beautiful word. Open. These are beautiful, everyone. Nice. So wonderful. Pure. Trusting. 
Oh, these are beautiful words. Oh my goodness. I have chills already. Love, light, delicate gift. Okay. Let me see if I can add these onto the slides here. Okay. So we have precious, open, pure, trusting, love, light, delicate, and gift. All right, wow, what a beautiful list. And feel free to shout it out if I missed your chat. Um, I'm not the best with navigating all the pages on Zoom. <laughs> Trying my best. Um, so what about hopes for baby or something you wanted baby to know? Did anything come up during your individual meditation experiences that you're willing to share? Missing the chat anywhere here. Oh, yes, there they are. Ooh, you are supported. Nice. You are completely loved. Wow, these are beautiful, everyone. Completely loved. Uh, happiness in life, nice. That you are enough and beautiful as you are. Ooh, that's a good one. Enough and beautiful as you are. Um, to receive love and compassion from me and all who believe in you. Oh, beautiful. Um, and I promise to support you and give you all that I can from my heart and soul. These are so beautiful, everyone. Wonderful. Okay, let me add these here. So, um, hopes for baby to be loved and supported, to have love and compassion. I'm seeing a theme here <laughs> to be completely loved. What you want baby to know, you are enough and beautiful as you are. Oh, happiness in your life. I will help you find who you are. That is beautiful. Thank you for that. Um, That is beautiful. Wonderful. I think we have an amazing list here. If anybody has anything else they'd like to add, feel free. Or if I missed something. Um, okay, now I'm going to share this screen again. Okay. And we are going to put this into a song. So I'm assuming everybody knows Hush Little Baby. <laughs> um, if not, we'll just sing through the melody just to get it in everybody's heads before we go on. So what we're doing right now um, is one way of approaching creating a womb song. Um, now a womb song is a song that is intended to be created um, upon expecting baby's arrival. Um, it can be created at any time. Um, there is research showing that the fetus can hear music as early as 16 weeks. Um, so the intention of creating the womb song is that it can be sung to baby every day, every night before bed. Um, and baby actually does become familiar with this womb song. Um, mm -hmm. I can speak to that firsthand because my little guy um, recognized his womb song when I sang it to him when he was born. Um, 
It is very real. They're able to differentiate um, and recognize a certain song over a song that they've never heard before. And when they're born, the predictability, the familiarity of a song that is known to them is really holding and really comforting. Um, not to mention it is a very bonding experience to be able to go inward, reflect upon your hopes for your baby and share wishes for your baby. It can be an extremely profound experience to sort of meet your, your baby in your mind's eye and, and reflect upon your deepest um, desires and hopes for your baby. Um, so I'm going to quickly sing through, or maybe not quickly because it's a lullaby, <laughs> but hum through Hush Little Baby just to get the melody in our heads. This is just one way of creating a simple song maybe for someone who is a little intimidated by the idea of songwriting from scratch. A lot of music therapists use this method to support um, others in creating special songs for their family and for themselves. But you can also create one from scratch too. You are welcome to sing along if you'd like. <laughs> I'm just gonna sing it on ooh. Ooh, 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 Right, so now we're gonna put our own words in here. So anyone can shout it out or feel free to put it in the chat. Um, how we start off this first phrase. So hush, we could use precious, open, pure, any of those beautiful words from that list. Oh, we got a chat. Precious, let's do it. <laughs> that got a second vote. Okay. And then we're going to need a name. <laughs> so does anybody have a name in mind? I can choose one too if nobody has one. Maggie. Aw. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Hush, precious Maggie, and then something we want you to know. What about you are beautiful or you are enough? Does that sound okay to everybody? Hush, precious Maggie, you are enough. That's beautiful. Okay. Okay. A little larger. Okay. Hush, precious Maggie, you are enough. And then something else that we want Maggie to know. we could say, you are supported and you are loved. Oh, that's beautiful, Ingrid. So, hush, precious Maggie, you are enough. You are supported and you are loved. That's so beautiful. You are supported 
Nice. Okay. So now let's hear it again. Hush, precious Maggie, you are enough. You are supported and you are loved. Hush. And then another describing word. So maybe hush, loving, for time's sake, we'll just say hush, loving Maggie. What about I'm here for you? And then what about a promise? What was one of the promises we said? Sing it from the beginning. Hush, precious Maggie, you are enough. You are supported and you are loved. Hush, loving Maggie, I'm here for you. I wish for happiness in your life. We'll just end it there, just for time's sake. Um, but that's a quick example of what a womb song might be like. Um, so womb songs are best if they are repetitive, simple, and non-alerting in nature. So a song like that um, doesn't have any crazy jumps in the melody. It's just very simple and repetitive, like most lullabies are, and that can really help to soothe baby and is appropriate for baby's uh, brain development. Um, so again, moving on, the healing nature of music. I'm assuming that most of you are here because you have a hunch that music is healing or you've experienced uh, music healing properties in your own life. Music is holistic. It has the ability to heal us in every way. Um, it heals our emotions. It tends to our psychological states, our sensory and somatic responses. It is able to create new neural pathways in our brain in areas that are otherwise altered or potentially damaged. Um, it is able to sort of transcend um, in instances of traumatic brain injury or any type of um, blockages that there may be in the neuro um, states. There are ways that music can retrain those parts of the brain, especially because it is processed throughout the entire brain, not just one portion of the brain. Um, it is healing in the way that it is vibratory. Um, it is accessible. It's free uh, for the most part. It is minimally uh, invasive and doesn't necessarily have any extreme side effects. Um, it is socially stimulating and supporting, cognitively stimulating. Um, for example, we learn our ABCs usually by singing the ABC song. Um, and physiologically, there's an immediate response that we have to music as well. Our heart rates oftentimes will decrease if we're listening to music that is slower and that has a lower BPM and can bring our and entrain our heart rates to a slower state of being. Our oxygen saturation levels oftentimes increase. We're able to breathe more when we have music. Um, it can regulate our our respiratory rate just by um, focusing in on the beat or even without even realizing it. It can also provide us motivation, adrenaline when we need it, um, and it really it can be healing in so many different ways. Um, so I wanted to touch upon very briefly, I know we spent a little bit of time on that experiential and I appreciate you indulging in that with me, um, but the history of music in perinatal care. So, of course, it is hard to know every instance of how music was used um, prenatally or during labor and delivery, um, but there are some 
um, examples of how music may have been used during labor and delivery as early as ancient Egypt, 1600 BC, um, in the fifth story of Papyrus of Westcar, there are depictions of goddesses that actually transformed into musicians to support women during childbirth. Um, it is said that the Ututu people of Nigeria have been said to use birth songs as a way to welcome their babies into the world, along with the Dagara tribe from West Africa. In Sierra Leone, it's said that songs are taught to women um, at their coming of age to prepare them for having proper songs to use during labor and delivery as well. Um, in India, um, there are songs called the Sohar um, that is sung um, as a way to support um, people during childbirth and in postpartum as well. Fast forward to uh, more recent times, um, I, I feel that many people maybe on a more casual basis use music in conjunction with their own labor and delivery and throughout their um, prenatal experience as well. Um, but it is a little bit more rare to see it used um, in regular routine Western medical care. Um, Many midwives, um, doulas maybe utilize um, music as part of the services that they provide as well. Um, but I would say it's a pretty underutilized and um, accessible service that is available to all of us being able to use music therapeutically during this time. Um, music therapy as a whole, the American Music Therapy Association um, came as a result of the first training program for music therapists that came in the 40s after um, World War II when uh, musicians were helping to soothe veterans um, after the war um, and the nurses found that they were healing a bit faster. So they created a training program for music therapists that then later resulted in what music therapy is and um, is known as today. Um, but music itself has been used for thousands and thousands of years for healing. Um, more recently, fast forwarding, in 1981, um, McCork and Williams began to study the use of music um, assisting childbirth and found relaxation responses and reduced um, reported pain levels from mothers. Um, Mary D. Camillo uh, established the sound birthing method where she trains music therapists specifically in being able to use music to help create a more stress managed environment for partners as they are going through this experience. Um, and she also had several case studies where she looked at um, the decrease in labor time, decrease in pain perception, um, and overall feelings of attachment and bonding to baby emphasized during um, the birth experience as well as throughout postpartum as well. There have been several studies linking um, increased breast milk production when listening to the therapeutic use of music as well. And of course, there are so many studies that point to um, increased brain development, increased language development when exposed to patterned, um, familiar, supportive and non-alerting music um, as infants as well. Um, in 2019, Lin and Chang uh, did a study um, on the effect of music therapy and anxiety during labor and in the postpartum phase as well. And in 2020, 2020 in 2020, there's an integrative review by McAfee and Chung on music listening during childbirth. So you can find a lot of those resources there if you're interested. Um, and this past year, our little UCLA music therapy team started a pilot study looking at stress levels um, with the PSS stress scale and the SNR, SNRS 11 scale for parents um, on the NICU and also on maternity inpatient to see if their stress levels were changed at all um, when exposed to music therapy. And we did see a small um, decrease in um, stress, um, averaging to be about a 50% stress reduction in 34 different parents. So, um, and also lullabies have been used since the beginning of time. I think it's partly intuitive. We also use music to celebrate um, as well. So 
the neurochemical responses to music. Um, the reason music is so, so perfect in supporting childbirth um, and postpartum as well is because the same crucial hormones that are necessary for the birthing process to help support um, the individual who is laboring and who was going through that experience in postpartum are um, naturally elicited when listening to music. So um, typically when going through a delivery experience, um, a, a more intimate and romantic environment with dimmed lights, um, soothing uh, sensations are going to help um, promote those hormones from kicking off on their own to aid in pain management and aid in um, the natural hormonal chain of responses that are necessary for that process. Um, but sometimes as we know, we are potentially delivering in the hospital setting, which can have harsh fluorescent lights. It can be cold. There can be a lot of um, maybe disturbing sounds, not necessarily pleasing sounds, and also potential associated anxiety with previous hospital stays um, or previous associations with um, the hospital, sometimes it's cold. Um, there are many environmental factors that can sort of stall that process. And music is a way to create an environment um, that is promoting of these hormones. So oxytocin, that beautiful bonding hormone, that happens just by listening to music. Um, feel good endorphins are released when you listen to music. So if you are doing skin to skin with your baby and singing a lullaby or listening to music, you are just on oxytocin overload um, with all of the good stuff that is needed to combat baby blues, combat postpartum depression symptoms, um, create healthy attachments and um, just help regulate emotions and support the whole family, decrease cortisol, that is key. Okay, um, the benefits of music, we already spoke to a bit, um, but cognitive development, language development, um, creating familiar, safe, trusting relationships and environments. Um, in the hospital setting, we're helping to create trust in this environment. Um, and for the caregiver, um, decreasing symptoms of depression and stress, increasing breast milk production, decreasing anxiety, and providing an outlet for expression when um, maybe there is an experience of overwhelm where words can't quite express it all. Music is um, a way to safely hold some of those feelings and express them in another way. Um, so I wanted to get into some of the interventions quickly and point everyone in, in potentially the right direction. Um, so some things that you can do with music would be playlist creation that can be used in every phase of the perinatal experience. Um, womb song, you just wrote one. <laughs> um, easy peasy, anyone can do it. Um, you can just do that lyric substitution if that's um, less daunting or you can reach out to a music therapist to have them support you as well. Music relaxation can be done at any time, deep breathing and training your breath to the music. And then the nightly practice sessions um, are utilizing those playlists that you can create to help cue the body's um, parasympathetic nervous system um, and entrain the body and prepare the body for delivery and relaxation and coping and postpartum as well. Okay, so here are some examples. It may look a little overwhelming and uh, potentially daunting. So I'll break it down into more simple steps, but I just wanted you all to be familiar with some of these recommendations from Dr. Mary DiCamillo. Um, she did her dissertation on music therapy assisted childbirth. And she found that um, there were different phases of labor that called for different music um, criteria. So she created these different playlists, um, finding that during early labor, um, positive focus playlist is more focused on uh, music that you have good memories with. So maybe um, romantic memories, these songs can have lyrics, songs that immediately put you in a good mood or bring you to a place and time where you felt great. Um, so using those in early labor, um, and then meditation is more, you know, 60, 72 beats per minute. Um, if you need to calculate that, you can count how many beats are in a minute, 
or you can count how many are in 15 seconds and then times that by four. Um, relaxation, imagery, kind of like what we did in the beginning um, during the experiential and then breathing baby down. I, I hope that this is a takeaway. Um, you would think that during the active pushing phase of labor that you need, you know, your intense, loud music where you're going to go, 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 and you need that adrenaline, but it's actually um, quite the opposite. It is important to relax the body, relax the muscles, relax your nervous system, um, and to use music that has a steady, consistent rhythm, isn't just changing and dropping the beat out of nowhere, um, but that is still gentle. Um, so I can play an example of that quickly. Uh, here. So an example of that would be something like this. So you can hear how there's a steady beat there, but it's still overall relaxing, not anxiety producing. and then a more meditative sound. This could be for any stage of the labor experience except for the active pushing phase when you are 10 centimeters dilated. <laughs> so very flowy, you know, 60, 70 beats per minute. Um, and no lyrics, because actually when delivering, you are in your primal brain and having lyrics is going to be too much for the brain to process. <laughs> so um, it is better to do instrumental for all phases of labor, actually, except for early labor, it's okay to have, um, you know, when you're still able to be walking around, um, you're not quite dilated yet, um, or at the very, very beginning, um, you can be using music with lyrics at that time. Um, but as your brain gets deeper and deeper into that primal brain, it is best to turn towards the instrumental music and meditative music. Um, so here, you're welcome to take a screenshot of this if you'd like. These are the different phases of labor and which types of music to um, play during those phases. Um, but I will say it is not the laboring person's job to be in charge of their playlist. Um, and it's important to have either a music therapist there um, or a, a partner there or someone who can help change the playlists. Um, what's most important is that there's a consistent flow of music and not a sudden drop in the music or a sudden drastic change, which can be distressing and cause um, an immediate retracting response in the body. Um, so to simplify those playlists, you can have just three different sections, the meditative, the breathing baby down, which is soothing, but still has that rhythm. And then positive focus, which can be used at the beginning of labor. And then also when baby is born, as baby is born um, in that magic hour in the you know bonding moments after delivery as well, or at any time during postpartum, these same playlists can be used. So the nightly practice sessions are um, a way to use those playlists that you create. And again, make sure you don't um, put them on something that has ads or commercials because that will throw you out of your relaxation and you are training your body and preparing it for delivery. Um, so step one is listening to those meditative tracks. And again, you can take a screenshot of this if you'd like, and it's also going to be posted on the integrative website. Um, but rocking to the music, rubbing your belly, talking to baby about your day. Um, there's so many different modified things you can do um, throughout these different phases. So step two is listening to the more rhythmic songs um, and the breathing baby down music, practicing Kegels and pelvic rocks, being on the birth ball. Um, if you are bed bound or someone is bed bound, um, there are other self-care things that you can do during this time, like using lotion or doing a face mask or um, you know, doing tapping as you are breathing and practicing um, different coping mechanisms to the music and so on. Okay, and then during postpartum, music can be used for sleep support, lullabies, for transitions during distressing 
diaper changes, bath times, um, anything that can cause a disruption in the routine, music, these same playlists that were played as early as 16 weeks prenatally can then be revisited. And I promise you, they work. <laughs> they relax baby every time. Um, for further brain development and cognitive stimulation as um, the baby turns into, from an infant to a toddler and then into, preschool age and beyond um, using music to help learn different words, uh, colors, numbers, um, associations, feelings, um, connecting with others. That's why there are so many nursery rhymes out there. Um, they really help to learn information due to their repetitive um, nature. Um, and also the way in which they can embed in the brain through melody and rhythm. It can help us remember things as well. Um, and then relaxation for caregivers always. We can't forget about the caregivers. And feeding support. Um, the rhythm of music can help to entrain in uh, feeding. So obviously not doing a lullaby during a bottle or a breastfeed, um, but using a rhythmic consistent, um, maybe like 70 to 80 beats per minute um, type of song, um, even with tapping or making like a sucking sound to encourage that sucking response um, has been shown to be extremely effective. Um, this is a little personal, but I just wanted to share because I think it really illuminates um, how that womb song, like you all wrote um, in the beginning with me, can help to transform um, a situation um, into a more peaceful situation. Um, this may be potentially triggering for those of you who might have some birth trauma, um, but this is my little guy um, hearing his first ever sounds in this world, which was his womb song that he had heard um, since he was 16 weeks gestation. Uh, so here it is. So notice how the outside environment has all of these sounds and this is a bubble that is created by music, which is what we can do for others when we provide music for them as well. You are I love it. <laughs> you are love. And your family is near. Oh, our sweet Maceo. We can't wait to show you the world. You're a miracle. I'm your friend. Do you have? So you can see this is a song that was sung, you know, every single day. Um, so he recognized it. He turned his head towards the sound. He was so calm um, in an environment that is not the most soothing, um, but it was able to hold us through that distressing moment. Um, otherwise would have been a distressing moment. Um, so it's just so powerful how um, something as simple as a womb song <laughs> can really um, transport us and create that bond and just make you this rock solid protected in a golden bubble. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you all so much for your kind words. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, he definitely did look towards us both. So I know I ran um, right down to the wire here <laughs> with almost a minute left, but does anyone have any questions, thoughts, um, reactions, insights, or even stories to share of music in your own um, experience in life? Feel free to shout it out. <laughs> or right in the chat. <laughs> right there. I can share. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I had I have four babies and four children. <laughs> and um, from 1992 to 2003. And so early on, my husband is a musician on the side and music's a huge part of our life. And so in 1992 at Evanston Hospital, I this was not in my realm, but I knew I wanted music. So I brought um, the soundtrack from a movie. I don't even remember the movie, but it, there was an Eric Clapton song called Change the World. And we played it over and over. And during the delivery, I just want, I think I played the whole soundtrack, but we, I asked for that song over and over. And 
to this day, when that song comes on or we play it, it's like I'm back in the delivery room. It's the most sacred mm. song and music. And it's just, it's so neat to have that correlation and, and beautiful moment. And so I just think that's like an added thing. It just, it, it's a gift that lasts forever too. Absolutely. There's such power in the associations that we can make with music and how music is stored in our hippocampus um, and in our limbic systems, right? It's processed there as well. So it's going to ignite those emotions and immediately transport us back to those moments in our life, which can be so powerful. Um, awesome. All right. Well, does anybody else have any um, anything else to say about uh, or questions? <laughs> feel free to email me. I have my information up here or call um, if you would like to be connected to a music therapist potentially um, who does music therapy assisted childbirth or just have some uh, further questions. Um, you can also check out mendingmothers.com if you um, would like to refer anyone or yourself experience um, music therapy support services throughout the perinatal experiences at no cost. Um, just feel free to reach out for that. Um, yeah, and then I'll show this if everybody can see it, just a little chart. I can send any information I have. So just feel free to reach out. Um, and thank you all so, so much again for joining. I hope that you were able to at least um, spark some insights um, and further curiosities on the use of music for healing in all areas of our lives. Um, and I appreciate you diving right into this with me. <laughs> thank you, everybody.